Okay, we're now live. Great. Oh, I hope everyone's doing well. In my office, reading films. Tonight we have this terrific spe speaker, Matthew Lundgren, is going to speak on ChatGPT. So today I picked a topic called um, protocols. And we do speak about protocols a lot. I think at the end of the day, the difference between a successful CT department or a successful CT study for our patients is really the protocols. Uh, that's not been an, a different answer since CT took 18 seconds for a slice and a minute to two minutes to reconstruct. It's always been how you do the study that makes all the difference in the world. There's no shortcuts. You need to do it right. Um, I have been giving lectures recently, and one of them was on, um, uh, you know, misdiagnosis. And amongst my first few slides, I speak about are incorrect protocols, H how you do this study, and if you don't do it correctly, you're gonna miss things, right? You're gonna miss detection of the liver lesions, you see about the abdomen in a second, liver, pancreas, kidney, bowel, you're gonna miss PEs, you're gonna miss lung nodules. Not only are you gonna miss things, but you're gonna misinterpret things. Remember, a liver mass could be a hemangioma or hepatoma, a renal mass can be a cyst, or an RCC, a pancreatic mass can be an IPMN, or it could be a adenocarcinoma. Detection and characterization are all dependent on protocols. Excellent article published in Surgery a couple months ago showed that in the ER setting, if you do not give IV contrast, you will miss 30% of the cases of acute abdomen. You won't diagnose them correctly. 30%, and they weren't saying you need to do five cc's a second and dual phase, they were just saying give IV contrast. If you don't give IV, you'll miss 30% of the diagnosis. That's staggering. You know, in many of your ERs, the ER docs don't want you to give IV contrast because they don't want to sign up for it or, oh, your patient doesn't need IV contrast. And I've shown you articles in the ER literature where the ER docs say, oh, radiologists want IV contrast, but they, they just have pain in the asses. They know, uh, they, they know, uh, they know, they know, uh, they don't know enough, or they just have pains. Well, the answer is no, that's the case. Article written by Alec Megabill a few years ago made the point, quality depends on that. Uh, article written by uh, Perry Pickard on um, the, um, the role of contrast in oncology patients. There we spoke about oral contrast and, and uh, Alec also about oral contrast, making the point that you can miss 20 to 30% of lesions by not giving oral contrast. Yes, it's easier. And both Perry Pickard and Alec Megabo made the point that easier doesn't mean it's better. Yes, it may slow you down, quote unquote, a little bit, but the most important thing is the right diagnosis. Being very efficient and having the wrong diagnosis is not good. Right? So we need to have the right diagnosis. So when you speak about protocols, really take a look at what you're doing. I know it says that you're giving oral and IV or IV or, or water or this, but what are your techs actually doing? Uh, there's been a lot of change in staffing at Hopkins and where you are as well. Um, you know, I think in general there's a lot of change in staffing. And the more change in staffing, you lose a lot of the tradition how you did things. You have new people, not that new people are not good, but they're not used to how you did things. And everyone is so busy now, and no surprise, what's the first thing that happens when you're very busy? You have less time for conferences, you have less time for discussion, and so when you're very busy is when you need more conferences, you need to be efficient, you need to be making sure that everyone's doing things correctly, but often that's the reverse because you're too busy to have conferences, you're too busy to get together. So what I'm saying is, whether it's Zoom, whether it's email, whether it's in the hall, in person, however you do it, whatever works with your team, and your teams are often spread around, you gotta be emphasizing the basic stuff we always know. Oral contrast, IV contrast, all the things that we're always, always doing that becomes very, very important for us. So you've got to keep doing it and you've got to keep trying to do it and do it correctly.
So that indeed is very, very important. So we'll make sure we keep doing that. Um, other things. What are you doing in terms of single phase versus dual phase imaging? Um, one of the things we show, like in pancreatic cancer, to do it well for staging and detection, you need to have two phases, arterial at about 35 seconds, venous at about 65, 70. It ends up, most people end up doing one phase. Most of the cases we see on outside scans is a phase that's probably about 80 seconds. Um, you know, you'll probably see most tumors on the venous phase, so 80 seconds is probably gonna be okay. But the reality is, is you're not gonna see all the tumors and you're not gonna be accurate in terms of staging. You need to remember that dual phase imaging is very important. Arterial venous in looking at the liver, in looking at the pancreas. You need multiple phases, including non-contrast in looking at the kidneys. To evaluate the adrenals, you need non-contrast 60 seconds and 15 minutes to look at something, whether it's an adenoma or not. You need to do it that way. You need to think about how to time PE studies. Is it What you want to do maybe is bolus tracking to get the best visualization of the pulmonary arteries. You want to make sure the pulmonary arteries are opacified with contrast, which means the aorta is not going to be well opacified. If you want to do a triple rule out, aorta, pulmonary artery, coronaries, which is often a challenge, you need to make certain that your timing is such that all of the components are very well evaluated. It's one of the hardest studies we do to do a triple rule out, but it can be done, but you need to change the timing because the timing that's best for the aorta and coronary arteries in that matter is not the best timing for a pulmonary embolism, but yet you need all three. We also talk about protocols in terms of targeting images. You don't want to have everything be really small. You want to target, but you also want to make sure you reconstruct the full field of view. So things that are at the edge of the field of view aren't missed. That becomes important. You also want to make sure as radiologists, we look at the topogram. Yes, the topogram often doesn't show anything we're not going to see on the CT, but in about 2% of the time it does, and it shows things that are important, that are important not to miss, because topograms are often longer than the text will target it down to the area in question but you can see lung nodules or masses or other things. We wrote that paper years ago with Bill Scott and Bob Gaylor. So it's something you need to really be thinking about and be very careful with. There's no, uh, there's no um, shortcuts. I think also one thing to comment on, you need to also be looking at your protocols in general. I've made the point for many years that once a year, maybe twice a year would be great Look at all your protocols. Make sure you're having the right protocols. People, people can adjust protocols. People can add protocols. And all of a sudden you find out that the protocols you have are too many or inaccurate or it's not doing what you think you're doing. So surely at least once a year, check all your protocols. Be very careful. Make sure the protocols are the same on every scanner. You know, obviously you have to adjust a little bit if one's a photon scanner or one's a flash or one's a force or one's a GE dual source or whatever your scanners are, the protocols need to be specific and optimized for that scanner, but you need to have relatively the same protocols across your entire um, service line to make sure that the studies are done correctly. Again, it's nothing magic in doing that, but it's something that needs to be done and as I said, the busier we get, the more likely we are to cut corners. It's human nature because you're just so busy trying to get the work done. So hopefully, you know, you will be able to have the time to be able to make certain that you are a center of excellence and that everything you're doing is excellent. So with that, I think I've gone through a bunch of things that I think will be helpful for you. If you have any questions, email me or you can ask me the questions now. Um, I know that most, probably a hundred times or a thousand times as many people will listen to this talk later because at 12 o'clock East Coast time, all of you are very busy scanning your patients. So that's really the challenge. It's hard to listen to things now. But the good thing about Facebook Live is it may be live now, but it's going to be there later. And you can see it on YouTube, Facebook, uh, anywhere we are. So with that, I wish everybody a great day. And see you soon.